Welcome to the College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line. Here are your co-hosts, Doug Maurice and Shahan Jeharaja. And we're back on an unexpected version of the College Football Survivor Show. I just got back from vacation. Shahan had other plans for today, but the Big Ten and USC and UCLA decided that we need to talk about this. We're recording this Friday morning, Thursday USC and UCLA, the day started with the report and it ended with an acceptance. USC and UCLA, as you guys listening to this know already, will join the Big Ten starting with the 2024 uh, academic and athletic year. So that's two more seasons of normal stuff, and then everything's going to go crazy. And Shahan, you are sacrificing to be here for our, our very loyal listeners here today. What are you giving up to be on this show? Well, well, so let me clarify. So it was yesterday. So on the way, on the way to our spa appointment. So to, we just, um, my wife and I just celebrated our third anniversary. And I'm like, you know, what would be great having a nice relaxing day at the spa, getting a nice couple's massage. And then as we're about to leave, <laughs> we get <laughs> the text alert <laughs> that USC and UCLA are leaving for the Big Ten, that apparently a Big Ten country now stretches from sea to si- sh- shining sea, apparently. So uh, definitely a, a little less relaxed during that whole adventure than, uh, than maybe you would hope for the price of a couple's massage at a nice hotel. Um, and then I got out and uh, realized that Kevin Durant demanded a trade from the Brooklyn Nets. So all the you know all the relaxation went out the window pretty quick uh i i think it's probably too late to get my money back but uh man what a day to be off in college athletics i had a massage once and i found it awful i don't want to be poked i don't want to be poked i don't want to be prodded i don't want to be rubbed i don't want to be chopped i don't want to be anything i was like get me out of here so every massage to me is like your massage yesterday which is stressful it was the most stress inducing thing i'd ever undergone in my life i'll never have another massage but you are a massage guy it, you just didn't have a massage day right <laughs> you like the massage you like the massage yes yes i i like the massage i wouldn't go as far as calling myself a massage guy well i can call you that then. yeah <laughs> i think this was the first massage that i had since our honeymoon maybe i maybe have had one since then but uh no i mean listen i i'm a very uh tight anxious stressed individual i like to get some of that tension out of my shoulders it's it's nice uh i don't like the you know having to pay for it certainly i i don't like the bill at the end but uh but it was it was a fun thing to do for our third anniversary and now Looking forward to three years from now when I can have another one. Yeah, and on that day, we'll find out that, yeah, Florida State (laughs) is joining the... um, The Mountain West. The Mountain West. Um, So, okay, let's do this. And and listen, we're doing this. We're not behind, but I think everybody listening to this knows the basics of this by now. So I am very interested primarily on this show, Shahan, in the endgame. Because as we always like to tell people, we started this. This is a playoff show. So what does this mean for the playoff? What does this mean for how college football will decide its national champion? And I think, and I, it's not only a thought. It's based on some conversations also. I think, and maybe everybody know. maybe everyone's like, yeah, of course, Doug. Again, I never know where it's like, oh, am I the only person thinking this or am I or 90% of people thinking this? We're headed towards two conferences. And you and I, we had talked about like this Super League idea, like these top 35 teams or whatever. I now am thinking of it, it's going to be two. And it's going to be the SEC and the NSEC, which is the not SEC which will be, I think, the Big Ten. Maybe they'll keep the name. I think they probably will keep the name. But when you have a conference that stretches from coast to coast, I think the end game, I think this is the beginning of the end game, that if Texas and Oklahoma was the first step, them going to the SEC, UCLA and USC coming to the Big Ten is the second step. We will see in the next two years, maybe the next two months, a reshuffling that basically ends 
the Pac-12 as we know it, the Big 12 as we know it, and the ACC as we know it. And we will have two conferences that are not really what our current version of a conference is. We'll still use the word conference probably, but it'll be so large it won't be about playing everybody. It'll basically be a TV package. They can talk about the educational aspects of it because I was at an Ohio State news conference today and they were talking about, you know, it's like, hey, USC has a great library. It's like, well, USC always have a great library. Why did you add them today? It's for football, football money. So I think that's where we're headed. And then we can talk about what that would mean for the playoff. But is that where you think we are headed? Or do you think there is room for there to be three big conferences, four big conferences? Clearly, we're not done. But what do you think is the final result of this shuffle? So I think, uh, you know, to take a step back for a second, uh, when this news dropped, to me, it was a lot more shocking than Texan Oklahoma. I, I think that with Texan Oklahoma, that was a timing that was a surprise right it was it was that it happened so early that we heard about it in 2021 i thought that this was going to be a 2023 2024 conversation that probably texan oklahoma would think about leaving but all you have to do is look at the map right if you look at the map and see where los angeles is relative to the rest of the big 10 this is truly the death of geography and college sports in in my opinion it's a first step towards that because you know people talked about maryland and rutgers kind of being these transparent cash grabs uh in terms of adding television markets all that sort of stuff adding new york adding uh the dc metro but rutgers the furthest east team to nebraska is about 1200 miles Nebraska, the furthest West team right now to LA is 1500 miles. That's the closest. So this is the death of that, right? And I mean, this is not the podcast where I'm curious to kind of understand UCLA and USC both kind of address it in their statements, you know, that they probably will move to fully charter planes for every Olympic sport, you know, because you kind of have to at this point, right? But I, I am curious too. And, and again, this isn't the podcast for this is this sort of a step away from uh, from Olympic sports being part of the equation? You know, I, I don't know. I think that's going to be an interesting question. But, you know, to get to get back into it in re- relative to the playoff, I, I think the biggest thing to know is that in 2026, we're going to have a new model of some type. That's that's a guarantee. The Big Ten and SEC are going to define it. That That's just reality. They, they get to decide what it is. They get to decide what it looks like. They get to decide who's involved. They get to decide auto bids and which conferences and all this sort of stuff. Because, you know, a, a couple weeks ago, the SEC made an empty threat, in my opinion, that, well, we could just have our own playoff and leave everybody else out and you guys could just play our winner. And that was an empty threat to me. Well, now, if the Big Ten and SEC decide to do something, then the rest of college football has no choice, right? They have no choice. You can't disinclude both of those two conferences uh, when you're making a college football playoff format. They're going to ultimately decide it. Both of them will have a veto power. I still think we're probably going to move towards a similar model with 12 teams. I hope personally that there's guaranteed spots for conference champions for six of them because I think that that's good for the sport to still incentivize conference championships i've said this since the beginning i think that it is valuable for if you are the the acc champion and you're not clemson and you're not going to win the national title to still have the honor of earning a spot that's guaranteed in the college football playoff and same with the big 12 and same with whatever comes next we'll see what these conferences are you know i think that we also could just be moving towards a literal nfl model where you have the AFC and the NFC and the just play each other. We could be moving towards that. It's kind of going to depend what the big 10 and SEC decide. I, I think that's what it's going to be. And because there's, there's nobody left to add. Like, do we think the big 12, it's funny. The big 12 just hired a new commissioner. He may be the big commissioner of nothing. The big 12, as we know, it already may not exist in the way that we're thinking by the time we even get to the world where, oh, Cincinnati and BYU and Houston and UCF are going to join in 2023. I think by the time we get like, – like I'm jumping to the end of the podcast. We're doing the end of the – we're doing the conclusion <laughs> now. I think by the time, since they have delayed 
changing the playoff. We're four more years before we get a new playoff. I think it's possible by the time we get to what the new playoff structure would be, it will be irrelevant. Because I think what we may have by then is the final teams that are good enough at football and bring enough value in football to be worthy of inclusion in the SEC or Big Ten will have shifted there. Whether that's Oregon, whether that's Washington, certainly Clemson, Miami, Florida State, you know, does Utah, does Colorado, does Missouri, you know, uh, well, Missouri maybe would go to the Big Ten instead of the SEC, right? But all the, I think that shuffling, Baylor, Oklahoma State, I think all that shuffling could take place. And then you reach a world where your playoff is figure out your champ, SEC, however you want to do it, figure out your champ, Big Ten, however you want to do it. And then they play each other, and that's it. And maybe both those conferences do an eight-team tournament, do a four-team tournament, do a six-team tournament within their own conference. Whatever they decide, there's no auto bids. There's it's standing. It's like that's what you have. This conference is for, and you're gonna have it's gonna be so big. A lot of those teams in their own conference would not have played during the regular season. Whether you have mini divisions, with, but it's just as you said, it will be like the AFC and the NFC. But they can decide their structure. There's no group. What's the group? The group's going to tell these conferences, these giant conferences, how to figure out their champ? No, there's no 13 people in a room anymore. And everybody else that's not in that, Washington State and Oregon State and Texas Tech and Boston College and everybody who got left out of the reshuffling will be left to do whatever they want to do. You can make your schedule. You can play these teams during the regular season still. Maybe you do your own thing. But you are no longer part of the number one championship pursuit. And that's where we will be because you did not get an invite to the SEC and the Big Ten because you did not bring enough monetary football value to the expanded TV contract to be worthy of a share. So we're not going from 20 to 22 to get you in. This is who it is. And whether those conferences settle at 20 each, 22 each, whatever they are, again, they won't be conferences in the way we think of them now. They will basically be TV packages and they can share libraries. Great. I love the library discussion. (laughs) You know, I'm not. so, So I was at an Ohio State news conference. The Ohio State president, Christina M. Johnson, who I do think has proven to be very smart about these kind of things. And it's been very forward thinking, I think proactive, and she's new to Ohio State, but I think she's been an incredibly important force for Ohio State and the Big Ten and stuff like this. She's talking about how like USC and UCLA have like good engineering programs. And it's like, what the good engine? Did they just get the engineering program yesterday? Or is this because TV contracts are due? And you're, you know, it's like one of those things. I, 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 I can only stomach so much of that. I understand it. 1% of it is that. But in the end, it's going to be a football move, two conferences that are big, and that's it. And then why do you need a playoff committee? You don't. And so this will have been this brief little era until we broke in. And you and I talked about, again, I think changing your mind on things, I don't know if that's a sign of mental fortitude or wishy-washiness, but I had thought of a Super League. But no, it's not going to be a Super League. It's going to be two Super Leagues who then have their champs play each other. That's what I think it's going to be. I'm curious, though, because, I mean, just to be frank, right? So we've got the Big Ten, we've got the SEC, and uh, we've got these new teams coming in, Texas and Oklahoma, USC, UCLA, which, by the way, congratulations for UCLA to somehow getting roped into this because oh. of geography. Well, <laughs> but, yeah. Congratulations to you. Hopefully this means that UCLA will, like, invest in anything. But, well, you know, that's beside the point. Uh I'm curious long term, if it does become this two AFC, NFC type thing, right? This mini NFL, which, by the way, I think sucks, but that's another conversation. Well, it might be this conversation. I think it's worthy on this conversation of like why that might suck. That's worthy, but go ahead. Is Minnesota just part of this because they were already there forever? Like, are, is South Carolina just part of this? Well, I think I think Purdue and Minnesota and Illinois and Northwestern and Vanderbilt and 
Mississippi State and all those SEC and Big Ten schools that just happen to be in are down on their knees thanking the college football gods that they happen to be in the right conference. Because the other thing is, too, I don't think those big time schools want to play 12 big time regular season games. You've got to play some games you can win. So you need the Purdue's of the world. Ohio State and USC and Michigan need a couple Purdue's because you don't, if you're Ohio State, you don't want to play Michigan and Penn State and USC every week. And if you're Alabama, you don't want to play Georgia and Texas and Oklahoma every week. Every now and then you want to play Vanderbilt. So somebody has to be those schools. And it's bad luck for Texas Tech and Oregon State and Georgia Tech that they aren't in the chosen conferences. And it's good luck for Vanderbilt and Northwestern. And I think that's just the way it is because I do think there's, there's more of an invite component to this. When we did our pod about the super league, we made it more of a choice by the schools. Do you choose to play football at this level? And there's more of an invitation component that it's going to be the two conferences as they existed and everybody else above a certain threshold in the other conferences and the threshold so far is Texas, Oklahoma, USC, UCLA. Who else reaches that threshold? Six, eight, 10, 12 more teams that are currently not in the SEC and Big Ten, but I think that's what it's going to be. But I think I think what's interesting about that, right, is like the whole point of this exercise, and, and we can be frank about this, right? You look at the SEC and you look at the Big Ten, it's an ESPN versus Fox thing too, it right? Is. Like absolutely. This, these these conferences are fully going to be owned by these networks and it's going to be rivalry in that sense too which again to me is bizarre but you know but again the nfl there's an uh, an afc network and an nfc network like again that's not that crazy there's less of a rivalry component there but it's not that crazy for networks to have a side yeah no i I think what becomes interesting though is like if you are i mean because the big 10 right i i before this move, I think that the biggest thing from the Big Ten's perspective is that before this move, maybe I'm wrong. I would argue that the Big Ten had one team in its conference that could win the national championship legitimately. Maybe Michigan could get there. Maybe Penn State could get there. But I think that they had one legitimate national title contender. And now they have two. Yes. And the SEC has, uh, you know, three, four, five, probably, right? Alabama, Georgia, LSU. Florida can be that, um, you know, maybe you stop there. Obviously, Texas and Oklahoma both can be that now. So, I mean, you're talking six minimum. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they want one in 05. They want one in 05. It's, uh, so it's like humanly possible. That's not the bit. You can't just <laughs> casually mention Texas could win a national title and think that's going to slip by. Uh, no, no, no. But I think that it's critical to uh, to my understanding of this, that they are making decisions that screw themselves, not that they are like – not that it's like celestial bodies preventing them. Yeah. The fundamentals are there for them to win a national championship. Yeah. Maybe AM can get I I mean, that's that's a little far for me right now, but like what they're doing is is title caliber stuff and then they don't play football well. But like I think that at minimum you're talking five or six in the SEC. You're talking two right now in the Big Ten. Maybe that changes. Maybe maybe this is great for Michigan or for Penn State and they're able to kind of capitalize. Or Michigan State also for the, for that matter. But if you are if you are the Big Ten right now, I, I think that you do have to wonder like, man, we've got a lot of dead weight right now. We've got a lot is relative to this SEC especially. And you do have markets that that's part of it, right? Like Minnesota's in the Minneapolis market. They, they do bring legitimate financial value, but I'm curious, you know, do you just go by with a, I mean, yes, I agree. You probably don't want to play fantastic teams every week, but the other question is if you're Fox or if you're ESPN, do you care or do you just want to maximize what's in this league? Do you want to be dragged down by Missouri? Do you want to be dragged down with having a, uh, a you know, a, one of those types of teams there, right? I, I'm curious long-term whether that's the case. And so I would wonder, cause, cause look, I mean, it, we've never really, I mean, the last time that a team was like kicked out of a conference for being bad at football was Temple, right? Like back in 2002 or whatever, uh, UConn is kind of, <laughs> they kind of pulled themselves out. They probably were encouraged to leave a little bit from the AAC. Um, 
but I don't know. Nothing's holy anymore. Nothing's sacred, no. especially with the with television companies running this whole thing. And and so if if uh, you know if you're the SEC and if you're ESPN, if you say get out Mississippi State because we're gonna add Florida State and we don't want both of you. I mean, I don't know. I'm curious, to, and I think that I will say too. Part of this, I think, depends on. I think that what happens next in terms of structure also does depend a little bit on what those answers are. Because if we do have these two super leagues, but then like a lot of good teams outside of the league too, you know, Washington, Oregon are are really good teams that I think uh, still have a lot of interest. Florida State and Miami and Clemson, as long as the ACC still exists, uh, I think are interesting. You know, again, I think that that does create, even though we can all say that the Big Ten or SEC, and probably the SEC still most of the time, is going to win the national championship. I'm curious if there are quality brands outside and bad brands in the SEC and Big Ten, if that does create a little bit more of an opening for an 8-team or a 12-team with sort of a, a an undercard, in a sense, to the main event. Like, short answer on this. Do you think that is the end game? Do you think the end game is... Oregon, Washington, Miami, Florida State, Clemson remaining outside these two major conferences, or do you think they get folded in sooner than later? So the the reporting right now is that Oregon and Washington are not expected to join the Big Ten at this point, uh, in terms of that the Big Ten does not want them. This week? This Yes, this moment. Right. Um, obviously, it sounds like USC and UCLA have been asking about this for a little while, right? This is not something that popped out of thin air, uh, you know, so so maybe it just will take time and Oregon and Washington will get in. It would be it would be a surprise to me if Oregon and Washington ended up in a situation where they could not be part of this new group, right? These are two really good, really big, really important brands. So, so, and again, it's not about this week and it's not necessarily like what, what people are saying this week. You think in the next... Two years. Yeah. And the next two years, will Oregon and Washington be where they are? Will they be somewhere in one of the two bigger conferences? <sighs> I definitely think they're going to be in the Big Ten. I, I think that they will. But again, it's like, I, I'm curious how big this gets, right? Because I think that right now we've got two 16-team conferences. I think that we probably will start to push close to 20 but the other question about this too is like i mean we're talking about this being a mini nfl a semi-pro league a whatever whatever i mean how many because the nfl is 32 teams and there really is barely enough fan support to truly justify 32 teams in those leagues well like are we going to be moving to a world where we have a mini nfl and there's 47 teams you know i i don't know i don't know the answer to that because i do think that there will be a cap and that's why i feel like if we do move in a direction where washington and oregon join the big 10 i feel like they have to start having conversations about kicking people out okay we have more to talk about we'll do it next on the college football survivor show the college football survivor show where playoff survival is always on the line Doug Lamarius and Shahan J. Haraja back. You can follow us on Twitter at CFB Survivor Show. We'd like to get some, some questions from you guys there. So if you follow us on Twitter, you can interact with us there. You can ask us questions. We can use the questions on the podcast. A couple things that I want to bring up here. So one of the things that is difficult is when you join a conference, now there are more shares to the pie. You guys know how pies work, right? I don't like it when they're like, I don't want a lot of people at my party because then the slices of the pie get smaller. But if you bake a bigger pie as a result, then you might have more slices, but the slice doesn't get smaller. The slice actually gets bigger. So the reason that USC and UCLA make sense for the Big Ten is because they're going to bring enough value that now you're dividing the pie 16 ways. But no one's share is going to go down. It's actually probably going to go up because the Big Ten had said, we're renegotiating our TV deal. We thought it would be done by Memorial Day. Guess what? It's not done. Why isn't it done? Because they were working on this instead. So now talking to Gene Smith, the Ohio State Athletic Director, maybe more like end of July because now they're factoring in. There's reporting that Apple came back into the Big Ten negotiations after USC and UCLA joined. Again, I was at a news conference with Christina M. Johnson 
the Ohio State president and Gene Smith, the Ohio State athletic director. Listen, Ohio State's driving the bus on this. So what they say matters. They said the money's going to go up. OK, so the money's going up. So the other thing that Gene Smith said, and this is, again, people probably know some portion of this. The Big Ten shares equally. Gene Smith formerly was um, around things that were happening where he was around when the Big 12 came to be and he was at Iowa State and they decided we're going to have tiers to our money and we're going to have different levels. And all that led to was Texas is the big dog. Texas gets more money. Texas throws around its weight. Texas has the Longhorn Network instead of a conference network. And the result is Texas blows up the Big 12 and leaves. Ohio State, Gene Smith asked on Friday – was asked, could you ever envision a world where there's tears to the financial compensation for Big Ten teams? He said, no, I don't want that. He's saying this as the team that if there were tears right now in the Big Ten, the top tier would be Ohio State gets at least half the money. And then everybody else can, the other 15 schools can divide the other 15 shares because like that's how valuable Ohio State is to the Big Ten. At least they were before USC came. But the Ohio State itself does not want that. Ohio State wants to share equally, which then Shahan creates the scenario where if you are not raising the share of each school by coming in, that you are bringing in enough value that giving you a slice doesn't lessen everybody, why would they let you in? And then when you start thinking that way, it's like, well, who meets that threshold if you're not in L.A.? If you're not USC, if you're not UCLA's basketball program, who reaches that? And if you have that as a threshold, Shahan, you can say, well, it's Notre Dame and nobody else. And nobody else is ever going to join the Big Ten. I do not think, though, that they will quite adhere to that thinking because I think Oregon's close enough. Washington's close enough. Maybe Virginia, Virginia Tech, Duke, North Carolina, schools like that, I think is close enough. But I do think what the end of this is going to be is two conferences. As you said, it's the death of geography. It is the birth of like thinking. And college football is going to sort itself into, are you a little more SEC or are you a little more Big Ten? Just in sort of how you think about it and how you talk about it. And we know what that means. We don't have to explain that. Big Ten wearing a cardigan and the sec are, are you hoity-toity and talk about libraries or do you want to win football games i mean for real <laughs> so so notre dame uh I, I think we can say big Ten, right so <laughs> so like that's and that's you can be offended or embrace either of those depending on how you think because i certainly am not saying that talk about libraries is better like that's live in the world man right but i also don't necessarily think that being like we don't care about anything else other than football. I'm not saying that's better, but I think that's how it sorts. So then, okay, how's it sort? Well, maybe you sort Miami, Florida State, Clemson. Maybe you sort them to the SEC. Maybe you sort Notre Dame, Oregon, Washington, maybe North Carolina, Duke. Maybe you sort them to the Big Ten. And you just, and that's how, that's what this is. And that's the final, it's sorting on that. Stop thinking about geography, start thinking about mindset. And it's going to, there's only two mindsets. There's not room for a third, right? Like that's the thing. Like what, how could the ACC continue to exist in that? Clemson's going to stand for that to be like clearly the king of this third tier league. They won't stand for it. And if they leave, which they're going to, then there's nothing, then what's left of the, of the ACC, right? The, the big 12 has done the best it could do, but if Baylor or Oklahoma state or anybody else with a valuable football program gets an SEC invite, they're gone tomorrow. And then what are you going to do? I just think that's where that's where we're headed. But it's a sorting on philosophy. But the heart of it is you've got to care about football a lot. And that's why I think it's it's interesting. Well, I keep having 30 thoughts at once. So let's stay with that. <laughs> it's hard not to. The sorting based on that and the, the teams who are not currently in will sort themselves based on philosophy, maybe more so than geography. Although the geography – influences the philosophy right but i do think i think i think that's the main thing that is driving the two super leagues yeah i, I think so and um you know certainly i think that uh the I, I think that the west coast and the midwest and sort of northeast are 
more natural partners, right, than maybe the South. And But then the thing that you have with the South is that there's so much talent spread across the South that you can kind of be the South and not have to pull from too much else, right? I mean, you could you could pull from the Florida schools and the Carolina schools and, and obviously into Texas and all that sort of stuff and not have to go much further because there's such interest and such recruiting terrain in, in those conferences. So, no, I mean, I, I think it is going to be interesting from that perspective. Now, I, I do want to get back to, to what I said earlier. You know, for me, this obviously is an NFLization of college football. But I think to me, the thing that's most interesting is that I also feel like it completely misunderstands why people like college football. Because, for example, if you if you bring a team, I mean, I live in Dallas, right? It, the Dallas Cowboys are the team of Dallas. They're also the team of everywhere around Dallas. They're also the team of West Texas and East Texas and Oklahoma and all these surrounding states, right? Because that's like the geographical and cultural tie. That's not how college football works. People who go to Texas Tech aren't going to be like, well, Texas is the closest program going to become a diehard Longhorn. You know, that's just not how any of this works. And so I am curious. And and actually, you know, one other thing, too, is that, you know, last year we get this big game, national TV, big spotlight, Auburn versus Penn State. Right. Great game. Uh, Ended up being a really fun game and ended up having a big impact on the season. Well, like, that's cool. And we'll get more Auburn Penn State in the future. But like if Auburn and Penn State are playing quite a bit and if they're playing without any real stakes, which could be the case pretty often, is the fact that these are quote unquote big brands, is that valuable? Is that does that have casual appeal when because I I feel like one of the big draws of some of these big matchups that we see, right? I mean, we saw Ohio State, Oklahoma a couple years ago, right? Uh, Twice. And those were some of the biggest games in all of college football. But like what made it so unique was that it was rare and was that this was a big deal that they're playing. And is that the same if Ohio State and USC are playing every year, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously these brands have value, but I just am curious. You know, this is a gamble, in my opinion, by the television networks that people will consolidate their fandoms towards these teams, that it will draw casual interest, and that people will continue to support these big brands as big brands, even as they enter leagues, by the way, where they might just be average football teams. And I don't know. I- I'm curious whether that actually ends up being a winner. So, yes. Can I my answer just that to that just be <laughs> yes? Because I don't know what else to say. So the thing that is difficult, because this is a playoff show, the playoff is a national idea. But we, and you have forcefully made this point since this podcast started, that the sport is a regional sport. It is a sport where it's a cultural sport. It is a societal sport for your region. And it's just like everything where as soon as you have a good idea, your local restaurant starts to franchise itself, and now it's all over the country. And do you lose the local flavor? Do you spread the local flavor? I don't know. That depends how you view it, I guess. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? But everything, and again, I think there is a political, there's not a co- political component to this, but I think there's a political comparison to this. Because when people talk about politics now, all politics has become national. What people think about pres- presidents or the federal government or presidential candidates has now trickled down to every level of government from house races to state senate and state house races to school boards in a in in the old days where people said all politics is local right your mayor your town council that didn't have anything to do with who the president was it absolutely does now is that good Is that bad? It is. And I think the same thing is happening in college football. It was a regional sport, but we are so focused on the playoff and determining a true national champion, which I think is a worthy endeavor that that now has trickled down to everything. So do you lose? Do you completely abandon the regional component of the sport? No, 
I don't think you abandon it, but is it the most important thing? No, I don't think it's the most important thing anymore. Like being in a conference that matters with games that are on TV with cool matchups is the most important thing. But I think there's a way where you can still have, there's still 12 games on your schedule. You still have local rivalries. When you have these gigantic conferences, you're still not going to play everybody, right? But you have an association, you have a thing that you're sort of linked with, and then you determine your own champion, but you're still who you play every Saturday. I think there's still room to play a team, whether they're in your conference or not, that's down the road that you hate. And I think there's still room for that, but it's not the first thing. But the hard part, Shahan, is through the history of college football, that has been the first thing. Ohio State, Michigan, they hate each other. Now they're in the same conference or whatever, and I guess they're trying to – but the main thing is they hate each other. And then everything else follows. Well, we're already in a different era for Ohio State where you still hate Michigan, but you're also trying to beat Clemson and Alabama. And that's real. Is it more important? Is it equal? Is it – it's it's similar, right? It's not – Michigan's not all or nothing because if Ohio State beats Michigan but doesn't beat Clemson or Alabama in the playoff, Ohio State fans aren't happy. So USC, you want to be in the Pac-12. But, man, if, if Lincoln Roy doesn't post some national championships, people are going to be upset. I just think the priorities have shifted clearly. This is an example of priorities shifting, but I don't think it has to be abandoning. Everything is national now. Man, when I was a kid, you went to the Hard Rock Cafe on vacation. There were three Hard Rock Cafes. They were in New York and L.A. and Chicago. And when you were went to New York, you got a shirt and it had the big gold ball that said Hard Rock Cafe. And I went to the Hard Rock Cafe. Now there's a Hard Rock Cafe in Hartford. There's a Hard Rock Cafe in Milwaukee. There's a Hard Rock Cafe in El Paso. There's a Hard Rock Cafe in Eugene, Oregon. It's not cool to go to the Hard Rock Cafe anymore. Is that good or is that bad? It's the nationalization of everything. Nothing is local. So why should college football be any different? You're hanging on to the past, Shahan. You're, <laughs> rom- you're romanticizing something that just doesn't exist. It's not that it doesn't exist, but it's not the most important thing. Well, I, I think, though, that, for example, I mean, obviously, Ohio State is thankfully in a position where they're going to be playing Michigan every year, and that's going to still be a really important game, and it'll probably still be the last game of the year and have a, a big impact on things. Now, again, maybe we'll head into a mini playoff after that uh, within the Big Ten, and the game won't define the Ohio State season, but it'll matter still. But imagine if Ohio State uh, was in USC's place, right? And imagine that they joined the SEC, and that, like, Ohio State fans had to go to the office and there are no Auburn fans around. There are no Florida fans around, right? Like to me, in its simplest form, right? Because we have the NFL, everybody's fans of different teams, and that's not a big deal because they're all very interconnected because of the nature of the sport. To me, the draw of college football is you go into the office and you talk crap to people in your office who went to comparable schools. You, If you live in Texas, right? I grew up in Dallas. Uh, you are a Texas fan and you know Oklahoma fans and you know Texas A&M fans because they're your neighbors and you talk about college football with them. And so in, so that's why, you know, with Texas and Oklahoma, it's not the worst thing because you are rejoining Arkansas and Oklahoma and all that. But if you're a USC fan and you're going to the office you're not running into Iowa fans. You're not running into Penn State fans in your office in LA, right? And, and it just fundamentally changes the nature of the sport. And so, yes, I agree. And, and you know, you, you say about the politics part, it's also that people have, you know, only the opinion, the ability to, to comprehend two things at the same time, right? I'm team Big Ten, I'm team SEC, right? It is very uh, national politics of all of this. And And that sucks to me because life isn't a binary. It shouldn't be a binary. We shouldn't just be split into this side and that side. I think that one of the greatest parts of college football is that it has been a gradient, that there has been, you know, great teams from the West, great teams from the Midwest, great teams from the South, great teams from the East. That's really cool to me. And and the fact that we are moving in a direction to where there's basically two options, I think is, is, just completely undermines college football as a sport. And look, I I made this point to somebody on Twitter, right? Like, so I went to Baylor, of course. And uh, look, when you're a reporter, like being a fan isn't really 
as you know as fulfilling anymore and so but like for example I did not grow up in college football I did not grow up as a big fan of college football I watched Texas because I I grew up in Dallas but like I wasn't a fan well now I you know I went to Baylor and I was there during a great time when they played really cool teams and they won a bunch of stuff and they finished top 10 in the country and like that got me interested in college football in this new world if I went to school 10 years from now I might never become a college football watcher at all and so what does that mean existentially for the sports? I, I don't know. So I guess the question is, because, but you're talking about, you're arguing on behalf of regional rivalries and, and talking to people in your office. But then you're saying one of the things you liked about Baylor was that they finished in the top 10 nationally, right? <laughs> you didn't say that I loved that, that Baylor beat TCU and I love that Baylor beat Texas Tech. It, it was that they won the Big 12. It was that they beat Texas. It was that they beat TCU. It's that, it's the fact that they mattered. And I think that, I think that like, you know, for, for Baylor, right. They never won the national championship. They never made the college football playoff while I was there, of course. But I think the fact that they got, it was that they got noticed nationally. It wasn't that they succeeded nationally. It wasn't that all their goals were national, but it was that they were part of this bigger thing. They, they succeeded in this part of this bigger thing. And I think that that's how college football works best. It, it's, you know, Back, uh, I, I I feel like what's funny about me is that I like contain the ethos of the Southwest Conference, even though I wasn't old enough to actually watch the Southwest Conference. But like with the Southwest Conference, winning in that conference mattered, and then you got to play in like a cool bowl game that like people paid attention to. It was that is that, that people noticed them. It's that they played in something that people noticed. But like now, I think that uh, I, I think there's a difference between getting notice on the biggest scale and only caring about the biggest scale and only caring whether you win the national championship and not caring about all this other stuff. I think that that's uh, I think that those are two different things. But I do think and again, this is a playoff show, but but Baylor doesn't have a chance to win the national championship now. Right. Right. Like and and and. 120 of the 130 teams playing major college football don't really have a chance to win the national championship. So for those programs, it already is not only about winning the national championship. So, so yes, they're going to have, you're going to have two big conferences. It's going to be playoff focused, but you still have to retain some of that regional stuff. Some of that, Hey, we won on Saturday. Hey, we had a winning record. Hey, we won eight games. Hey, we won 10 games. You're going to have other goals that matter because they already matter because you already are not chasing the thing that you're still not going to be chasing. So let, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I want some short answers about what's going to happen and what some other schools should do as a reaction to this. We've been, I think, like philosophical big picture. I want to nail down, drill down a little bit on the on just yes or no's next on the College Football Survivor Show. The College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line. All right, Doug and Shahan are back. Let's do this. So as we, as it stands right now, UCF, Houston, BYU, and Cincinnati are joining the Big 12 for the 2023 season. As it stands right now, Texas and Oklahoma are joining the SEC for 2024. UCLA and USC are joining the Big Ten for 2024. This season, 2022, is going to be basically normal. 2023 seems like it's going to be a transition year. And then I think 2024 is going to be the new reality in a lot of ways. Do you think we will have more teams that will be changing conferences in 2024 than just the four that we have now? That by the time we get to 2024, will there be more changes than just USC, UCLA, Texas, and Oklahoma? Yes or no? Not by 2024. I'll be curious whether in this new Big Ten contract, if it's addressed in the contract, how they will handle a transition, how they will handle new additions, because I think that more are probably coming over the next five years, but probably not as soon as 2024. Okay. I will guess that it will be by 2024 that I think we have, we have a line in the sand. We have a date. Um, and I think that it doesn't have to happen tomorrow, but I think you have, listen, we had this UCLA USC reaction in less than a year. 
because Texas and Oklahoma, that was happening like last July. And now here we are and it's still June and or just July just started and this is happening. OK, I think we will have changes before then. Um, what do you think Notre Dame should do? Should Notre Dame stay independent or should Notre Dame join a conference? Notre Dame should join the Big Ten. I, I agree. Do you think they will? I don't have a good feel for that. I, I think that I think that they will, but it won't be by 2024. I think they'll join closer to like 2027 or 2028 when they realize that they're going to be just straight up locked out. Okay. What do you think Oregon and Washington should do what? Stay in a Pac-12 that attempts to add and keep itself alive? Or should Oregon and Washington very aggressively pursue joining the Big Ten? Oh, I mean, no question. They should aggressively pursue joining the Big Ten. Okay, I agree with that. Do you think the Big Ten should take them? I think they should. I think they should too. But I also don't know. I I don't know whether the Big Ten knows what they want at this point. Do you think that – I think that this is not at all any kind – I'm not even sure that we get to 2024. I'm not sure that USC and UCLA ever join – as the only two West Coast teams. So the people that right now you're seeing a lot of people talk about maps and look at this crazy map and the thing that you said about how long the distance is compared to what it is now. And it is crazy. I don't think that's sustainable. I don't think that's anybody's long-term plan. So I think that will rectify itself sooner than later. And if it's almost like a West Coast pod of the Big Ten, I think that will start to make more sense maybe kind of quickly. What do you think... Who do you think are the most attractive members of the Big 12 that could jump to, I guess, would be the SEC? Is it Baylor and Oklahoma State, or is that, um, I'm not thinking about that right. Is there somebody that's more attractive? Yeah, I mean, I, I will mention just real quick when you talk about a West Coast pod. Uh, I mean, L.A. to Seattle is still 1,100 miles. Like, these are still very spread out teams. Uh, if you're not taking anybody else from California, which I don't think we expect. At least it's still the same time zone. But yeah, you're right. Can't ride your bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, which which uh, people in Seattle are going to be pissed. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, I think that Baylor and Oklahoma State are the most attractive from a football perspective. If I were these new conferences, I'm probably a little skeptical of taking any private schools that aren't Notre Dame or USC just because of alumni base and that sort of stuff. I think that two schools that could become really valuable really quickly if things go well are Houston and UCF because they're big private school or big public schools, huge alumni bases that are kind of up and coming. Uh, I think that that joining major conferences will allow them to really leverage some of that and create interest in a way that they can't while they're in the AAC. And um, they're both in big metros. I think that helps. So I, I think that both would be investment properties per se, but uh I mean, if I were to, if you were to ask me right now, pick a team or, or if you feel like a team is going to join this, I, I feel like none of the big 12 teams might get an invite, but, but I think that, uh, that the big public schools that have some upside might be the better bets, even though I think that obviously Baylor and Oklahoma State and maybe TCU are the best football ads. What should Clemson do? Join the SEC. I mean, they have no choice at this point. What should Miami and Florida State do? Same deal. I think there's just no future in the ACC. Is there anybody else in the ACC that has a chance to jump somewhere? Um, and I guess, that again, the thing that I've been trying to think about is I just think I, I agree with you. Miami, Florida State, Clemson, that all feels SEC to me. I really could see North Carolina and Duke in the Big Ten, though. I'm curious because I think that one other thing uh, to think about is whether – there is a more basketball centered conference that comes about, you know, whether it's That's possible, the expansion of the big East, right. But cause, uh, or whether it's something else, right. I mean, I, I will say, right. Like the new big 12 is a heck of a basketball league independent of anybody else. Right. And so I don't know if there's a consolidation where maybe it's a little bit more basketball focused long-term. And now at the same time, if you, <laughs> if you get the big 10 invite, you might just have to go. Um, but I, I will be curious with Duke and North Carolina specifically, uh, you know, NC State is kind of a wild card in there. 
whether they sort of decide to go all in on basketball or whether just the massive payouts and just getting beaten up in a, in a major conference is uh, also appealing to those major conferences. I don't know. You know that you're making an interesting point here. So I, I, I really am all in on the idea that it's going to be two super leagues, but if you had this big 10 football super league, and an SEC football super league that were clearly football focused. And I asked, I asked Gene Smith and Christina Johnson from Ohio state, like, why can't you just do this for football? Why is this? Cause again, I, I just don't understand putting tennis players and swimmers and soccer players on planes. And again, it's magnified for the USC and UCLA athletes, you know, for the big 10 athletes is, but that's every road game is going to be nuts. And Gene Smith said, well, if UCLA and USC like just came for football, what would their every other sport do right now? And so the idea is at the moment, everybody's moving everything. And he said, maybe down the road, you can get to a point where you just do it for football and then you can fall back in sort of into some of, some of your more geographic conference affiliations for the Olympic sports. But like, that's not where they are right now. So I do think maybe that's an end game where it is just football, but they're not there yet. Which I think makes a lot more sense, right? Because I agree. It, Everybody, everybody's talking about USC in the context of having to fly 1500 miles for their closest football game. But like, football's not the biggest issue, right? It's everything else. It's the fact that your rowing team, that your tennis team has to travel to Rutgers and to, to Northwestern. That makes no sense for anybody. You know, these are sports that play multiple games a week. And you're going to make them go across the country for every single game. That sucks. It's nuts. It's ridiculous. And so I do think that I personally, I mean, again, obviously I've, I've expressed my displeasure with this uh, NFLization, but I think it's a lot better institutionally to have this break off and have just an AFC and NFC. And then just sort of, I mean, cause where would USC play? They could play in the West coast conference. They could play in the WAC. They could play in the, I mean, obviously I don't think the PAC 12 would welcome them to keep their sports there, but who cares? You know, I think that that's a much better, they could play in the mountains of West. I, I think that that's better for everybody um, to have these hyper regional conferences, you know, basketball, maybe you could still do something a little national, but I mean, freaking volleyball you're you're going across the country for volleyball that sucks that sucks for everybody so i think a, a lot of that is just nonsensical and people just say like well there's logistics we have to figure out we'll figure them out it's like well that's a big thing to will figure you? out will you and they said like you can study on planes and again it's like you can study on planes are you kidding me no that's like a big part of the answer <laughs> oh is you can gosh. study on planes so and they like ohio state was saying a lot of the olympic sports they the actually worst quote play I've heard a, so far <laughs> <laughs> they play on weekends and like Gene Smith actually like basketball is actually kind of the bigger thing because you're playing a lot of Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. And so I do think that there's a lot to figure out with that. But here's here's the thing. And we'll wrap up you can with this. study on planes. I hate that. Oh, my gosh. I, I've become radicalized. <laughs> no. And, and it's like it's like you can't don't. It, and again, I'm not trying to single them out, but that's who we were talking to. It's like, don't tell me about somebody's engineering program and then say that the solution is you can study on planes. Like I just oh come gosh. on, like, let's, let's just be real. And I get it. We all know the deal. And then there are things you have to say in press conferences, but that I like, again, the sec, I'm not sure they're saying study on planes and library talk. Cause it, no, don't lie to me. That's the funny thing about all of this is again, like we talk about, there's the hoity toity take academic seriously type thing. But like, this is also the conference that made the most transparent money grabs by going into D.C., New York, and L.A., right? Like, so they want to have this moral authority. They obviously tried to do that whole thing through COVID where they're like, oh, we're, we're looking very serious at it. Oh, everybody else is playing. Oh, gosh, we, I guess we better. Play. Like, come on. Stop trying to pretend, right? Like, just be a sports league. It's OK. Just be a sports league. Right, which again is the sorting. This is because one's going to be in all, just a sports league and the other one's going to be a sports league that's also – acting like it's something else. So it, so in the end, what about this idea, though? You have two football super leagues, and then there are carve-outs where you have a sort of an ACC basketball league and a Big 12 basketball league that also play football but really get after it in basketball, right? The, and, and, it's, and if you're a school where basketball is actually your number one sport, you might be interested in that. But – Maybe there is a world where it's a 12-team playoff and the SEC gets five and the Big Ten gets five, and then there's two other spots for the basketball league's football champ to slide in, right? And and, and it's sort of maybe you do sort of pull. I was thinking that, you know, if it's just you have the SEC and Big Ten champs meet, then you can figure out, 
your playoff within your conference on your own, but maybe it is five bids for you, five bids for you. We'll mix them up, right? And then then you get a little crossover and then one bid for you and one bid for you. And like, it's not fair, but if you wanted to sort yourself, if we invited you into our football league, but that you could carve that out. So then maybe North Carolina and Duke and Virginia don't have to go anywhere. They lean into basketball and Baylor and Kansas and Schools like that don't have to go anywhere. They lean into basketball, and their football champ still has a shot. Maybe that, maybe that's okay. That's that's a little bit of a compromise between what I was saying, where it's just two leagues and that's it. Well, and and that's the thing, right? I I think that that's a much healthier long term path for college football. It's none of this is great. I want to be clear about that. None of this is great, but that's why I'm still intrigued by the idea of even in this world where the Truly, the 12 best teams will probably be from those two conferences. I think that there's value in, you know, we'll see the number of conferences that are somewhat major that we have long term. But let's let's just say six still. I think that there's a lot of value in still having a 12 team playoff with four to six uh, auto bids for for conference champions, because I think that that does preserve some of the allure for anybody who's not in the Big Ten and SEC. And like, because here's the thing. The SEC, or, or sorry, ESPN and Fox own a lot of rights to other leagues too. They're devaluing their own product in many cases. And so I'd be curious, because again, I, if you are a, uh, you know, I mean, again, I'm always going to go back to the Big 12, right? If you're a Kansas State fan and you're never going to win the national championship, you were never going to win the national championship anyway, but like you could make the playoff, you could play some of these teams. I think that's a lot better. I think that's a much better situation to be in than just completely being relegated to being a Conference USA team or to being, a, you know, to, to be completely separate from all this. That's kind of, you know, getting back to what I was talking about, about Baylor, right? Like just making the playoff, I think, would have been really exciting. Nobody would have cared if we, you know, if Baylor lost the national championship when I was there. But like, I think that just being in the conversation to make the playoff was huge for them. That's why I've been an advocate for the 12 team playoff for a long time with six auto bids. Cause I think that even if you're an undercard being on the card matters, right? I, I would point back. I, I don't remember what year it was that, but like, you know, the Jordan Lynch, Northern Illinois teams, right? I'm sure that was the biggest moment for fundraising, for attendance for Northern Illinois. And nobody thought that they actually were going to beat some of these top teams, but to be mentioned, it's such a huge deal. And so if we're able to create a system that preserves some of the ability to be mentioned, even if you don't have a chance, I think that that's significant. And I think that that's a lot healthier, but we might just be moving towards the NFL and, you know, cool. I love an NFL where they restrict player salary and uh, have less local ties and the players are worse. There's a way it can work. There's a way it can work. I, I don't think this is like the death of college football. I think there's some good and some bad in it. I think you do – the more you lean into the pro-style stuff, that you just are undercutting every argument about amateurism and every argument about why guys – so that's – but we're trying to figure out the football right now. I do think a world where – and I, I do think a little bit – if these conferences are going to be gigantic and make all this money, they're going to want to control their own destinies a little bit. So, again, they're not going to want a committee deciding who makes the playoff. But if you tell the SEC you get four, figure it out, you decide, send four. Big 10, you get four, send four. And when you get there, the committee will pick the other four. Maybe it's auto bids, but maybe it's okay. Now we have these lesser conferences. We're acknowledging they're lesser, but we're still going to give them a chance. We have two super conferences, and then we have everybody else, and the two super conferences each get a third. Or the two super conferences each get five, and then there's two to hand out somewhere else, or whatever. I do think maybe we get to that, but I do think the super conferences, you – create gigantic TV packages and you become more in control of your own destiny, which I think is two things that the money rules it all. But I think being more in control of yourself, that's what we've talked about a lot. As much as it's a national sport, you want regional control. And I think the, to have two super conferences, you would allow those conferences to have that control. Okay. Is there anything we didn't talk about? <laughs> plenty, but we'll have plenty of time over the off season to keep getting into it. So I think this is so. This is just a bonus pod. Uh, Shahan was going to be doing spa stuff. I was still going to be. I just I got back from my vacation and I was going to be like easing back in. But this is so. I think we'll have two next week. We have the Apple Show for Apple Podcast subscribers. This is a new, fresh round of stuff. Like it's one of those things. The theoretical stuff 
is interesting, but it only goes so far for me. But when things actually happen, now it's like now it's concrete. Now we can we're actually talking about real stuff. We're not just you know naming ah oh, should Iowa State whatever. So we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about, but we also got to get start getting ready for the season, right? So and by the way, moderately timely on our Pac-12 preview where we played should this team be good at football. And then it was like we decided only three of the Pac-12 programs should actually be good at football. And then USC was like, exactly, we out. Uh, One of the teams that we said no to, the UCLA Bruins. (laughs) No, I know. Uh, But they they were like, well, we'll try. Like they're long for the ride and USC didn't want to go alone. So like they just – it's good to have a famous friend. So um, (laughs) – but yes, I mean that like it's it's hard because again, as we had said when we played that game, if we played that game with the Big Ten, we would have had seven or eight. We wouldn't have had two or three. And guess what? USC. I'm not saying it was the only catalyst, but I think somebody at USC listened to that podcast, <laughs> said, "What are we doing?" and said, "Let's go join the league that cares about football." I mean, just just to kind of wrap this all up. I, I mean, the reality is right, like. We've had all this talk about, uh, you know, the, the Big 12 and the ACC and the Pac-12 and this sort of group of three and and all of this. The reality is the only difference between the Big 12 and those other two leagues is that they lost their title caliber teams first, right? When you remove the title caliber team from these leagues, it starts to look a, a lot the same, right? And then even down to the, you know, in some ways, the AAC, in some ways, the Mountain West. Like they don't look all that different. And so I'm going to be really curious. I, I think that one thing that we might see is I, I'm curious to see with the Big 12 versus Pac-12. It feels like some sort of consolidation between those two leagues is probably coming in some way. Uh, I'll be curious to see who's the aggressor. I, I'll be curious to see where people want to go. Right. Um, and and I think the A, you know, the ACC is very lucky because they're in a position where their grant of rights expires in 2033. But they can get out uh, teams can get out of it with a 54 million, I believe dollar buyout. So I think that they're going to be interesting to watch over the next couple weeks and months to see whether there's legitimate movement there. But these, these conferences, these other three conferences are going to have to try to figure out something quick. And, and so, uh, and to just close this out too, no bigger loser today than Jim Phillips, who decided to swing his mighty fist around and prevent the playoff from expanding uh, in order to try to create a TV contract. Because guess what? We could be in a position right now where there are six auto bids in a 12-team playoff, and the ACC would still be likely guaranteed a spot no matter what happens next. But guess what? You created the NFL instead. Congratulations, Jim Phillips. Okay, that'll wrap it up for now. CFB Survivor Show on Twitter. Apple podcast show each week. We were going to take this week off. This is a bonus episode. We had said no podcast at all this week, but typically each week we have the Apple podcast show for Apple podcast subscribers, two ninety nine a month. You get all the Apple shows for that. And then we have the free show. That's for everybody. This is a free show. It's for everybody. And it's a bonus one because the world changed beneath our feet. Shahan, go get another massage. Put it on the survivor <laughs> show. I need one. I'm, I'm riled up right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe that will be our Apple show next week. Maybe that'll be the five things we are. Let's make this. Let's, let's lock this in. So if you okay. want to be an okay. Apple podcast subscriber, we will each make a list of the five things we are most riled up about. <laughs> about college football right now. Yeah, okay? let's do it. We'll make our list. And then again, we and then it's going to be July. And before we know it, we're going to be at conference media days. We're going to start previewing football because it's still a football show. It's not just a, a financial realignment show. Thanks to you guys for listening. Thanks for joining us on this uh, surprise edition. For Shahan J. Haraja, I'm Doug Maurice, and that was the College Football Survivor Show. The College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line.